All right, so now we're going to talk about numerical differentiation of data. Okay, so this, um, this week of lectures is all about how you do calculus on a computer in MATLAB. Okay, so remember calculus deals with the rates of changes of quantities. So we have things that are, are changing like populations or maybe disease spread. Um, all kinds of things can be modeled using rates of changes of quantities. And in calculus, you're used to taking um, limits as quantities go to zero and doing mathematical formalism. But here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, numerical differentiation and numerical integration. Okay? So, in a normal calculus class, you'll learn about the derivative as the rate of change of a function, um, either in time or in space. And you can think about this as the slope of a tangent line. Okay, so let's say that this is my function f, and it's a function of t, let's say a function of time. Uh, you could also have it be a function of space, it doesn't matter. And the idea is, I want to know the rate of change of this function at a given point t. Okay, t in time. And so there's a couple of ways that I can do this. So usually what I'll do is I'll take a point either directly to the right or directly to the left, and I will approximate the slope of the tangent line using the slope of the line that connects these two points. Okay, so it's not perfect. This is a point uh, t plus delta t. So delta t is a small number, uh, which is the spacing between these two points. And the idea from calculus is that as I make delta t smaller and smaller and smaller, so as I bring this point closer and closer to my original point where I want to calculate the derivative, this line will get closer and closer and closer to the true perfect tangent line to this function. And that's the derivative. Okay, so we usually define the derivative. We say um, df dt, and this is evaluated at the point um, t in time. So df dt is equal to the limit as we take delta t going to zero, that's just another way of saying as these points become closer and closer together, as this delta t gets smaller and smaller, of the difference in f values, so this is f of t plus delta t, minus f of t divided by delta t. Okay? And this is a pretty simple expression to um, to think about, this is the derivative we're used to seeing from calculus. And this, the numerator is really just a delta f term. This is the change in my function f. Right, this uh, delta f here. Between f evaluated at t and f evaluated at t plus delta t. Okay, so this is just delta f divided by delta t, and we're taking the limit as t goes to zero uh, of that expression. But, I mean, this is all fine and good in, in mathematics, but in a computer, you can't really take the limit as delta t goes to zero, right? There's only finite precision with which I can represent numbers in a computer. And so delta t can get small, but it can't take the limit as it goes to zero. So what we do in MATLAB, or in a computer, is we essentially just drop this constraint that I take the limit as delta t goes to zero, and I say, well, okay, this isn't exactly equal to my df dt, but it's close. It's approximately equal. Okay, so this is uh, approximately equal to my derivative for small delta t. Okay, so if I take a small enough delta t and I just calculate f at those two points and I take their difference and divide by delta t, this should be close to the derivative of my function uh, at time t. Okay, great. And because I'm using a point t and another point that's forward in time, forward by delta t, this is called a uh, forward difference scheme. called forward difference because I'm taking the difference of my function at some time forward and at time t. Um, I could also do a backward difference scheme. So in the definition of the derivative, it's perfectly fine um, 
instead of taking f of t plus delta t minus f of t, I could have taken f of t minus f of t minus delta t divided by delta t. This is also approximately equal to my derivative. And this is called a backward difference scheme. And the idea here um, is also pretty straightforward. So if instead of taking a point to the right by delta t and taking it closer and closer and closer to my initial point and looking at the slope between that line, I could have started with a point to the left of, of, of t. I could have started with this point down here at t minus delta t. And I could have brought that point closer and closer and closer. And that tangent line will also approach, uh, have the slope that's approaching the derivative. So both of these will exactly equal my derivative if I take delta t goes to 0. And so what we're going to see now is that you know, this is true mathematically as delta t goes to 0. What we're going to do is we're going to code this up in MATLAB for small but finite delta t. And we're going to see how good this approximation is. Okay? And we're going to do this on the following function. So we're going to take the derivative of a sine function. So we're going to say, um, we're going to say f of t equals sine of t. That's going to be our function. And we know that the derivative, um, let's call it f prime of t, is going to equal cosine of t. So this is a simple example where we know exactly what the derivative is, so we can see how close is our finite difference approximation. OK, so we're going to evaluate this function. Um, using these two forward and backward difference schemes. And we're going to see how close is our numerical derivative to the actual cosine derivative. Okay. Okay, good. So now we're going to code this up in MATLAB. Here we go. OK, so this is pretty straightforward. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is clear all of our memory, uh, close all of our figures and the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a time step, dt equals, this is my delta t, dt equals, um, let's start with something small like 0.1, OK? Um, or maybe 0 0.01. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a vector of time, t equals negative 2 in increments of dt up to 4. I'm going to say my function is equal to sine of t. And I'm going to say that my exact derivative is df dt equals cosine of t. OK, pretty simple right now. I'm just writing down stuff that I know. So I'm creating a vector of time from negative 2 to 4. Uh, that's about a period of sine, right? It's about 2 pi. My function is evaluated at that vector of time, and it's equal to sine of time. And my exact derivative is cosine. Okay? And so now uh, I'm just going to do some plotting commands before we actually do the derivative, because I want to see what the true solution looks like. So some plotting commands. Um, so we're going to plot time and our function. And I'm going to make this a black line dashed with a line width of 1.2. So let's just uh, see what this looks like. OK, so this is our sine wave um, function. Good. And I'm going to hold on and grid on. I want, I want to grid so I can see exactly where everything is. And I'm also going to plot t by df dt as a solid black line. Um, and I'll make that thicker. And then I'm going to put a legend, L1 equals legend, and this is my, um, my function and my derivative. Derivative, OK? Um, OK, good. So, and I'm going to just set my axis so that I'm always looking in the same frame. Uh, so I want my x-axis to go from negative 2 to 4, and I want my y-axis to go from negative 1.5 to 1.5. So I want to be a little bit above and below the sine wave. OK, so now when I plot this, what we have, um, I got an error because, um, because pot is not a command. It should be plot. No pot in MATLAB. 
Okay, good. So this is the data that we're working with, right? We have this nice, clean uh, derivative function. So our dashed line is our, is our sine wave. Our solid black line is our derivative function. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use this forward and backward difference scheme on this function. And we're going to see how close do we get to this, uh, this derivative. OK? Good. OK, so now we're ready for the, the part we just learned. So now let's say um, we have forward difference approximation. <coughs> Excuse me. And because I have this vector of time defined, I can evaluate my function at that entire vector. And I'm going to say df dt forward, so big F stands for forward difference, equals, and this is going to equal my function evaluated at t plus dt minus my function evaluated at t divided by dt. OK, so this is sine of t plus dt, the whole vector of time plus a dt, minus sine of my vector of time, so f of t plus delta t minus f of t, and that whole thing divided by dt. OK, sound good? And we're going to do the same thing for backward difference approximation. df dt backwards is going to equal sine of my vector of time minus sine of t minus delta t divided by delta t. Good. Uh, and the last thing we have to do now is actually plot these things and see how, how close they are to our exact derivative. Okay, so now we're going to plot t by df dt forward in blue. And let's make that a line width of 1.2. And let's plot t by df dt backward. Um, and let's make that red line width uh, also 1.2. Okay, so does this make sense at this point? Um, we have our function f, and here, because it's a nice function, I can just say sine of t, and it evaluates it at that whole vector of t. And I'm plugging in my forward difference approximation and my backward difference approximation, and we're going to plot them. Okay, good. And you'll notice that we actually have a pretty nice, um, Pretty nice agreement. It's actually very, very, very close here. So I have to zoom in a lot to see that my red and blue curves are actually very, very close to my exact derivative cosine. Okay, so this is great. For a small dt, for a dt of 0.01, I get great agreement. They're very, very close to the true derivative. Um, the forward difference is blue, so it's over predicting a little bit in some places. The backward difference is red, it's under predicting in a few places. Okay, this is great. Now, what happens if I, um, what happens if I decide to use a different delta t? Okay, what if I use a bigger delta t? So here I'm going to, I want all of my plots to still have fine resolution, so I'm still going to use point oh one for my time vector. But now my delta t, I'm going to take it from 0.01 and I'm going to make it larger. Let's try to make it like 0.1. Okay, we're going to make it 10 times bigger and we're going to see what happens to our error. Okay, let's hope this runs. Good. Okay, now I don't even have to zoom in and you can see that there's some difference between the blue and the red curves with my true black derivative. Okay, so making the dt bigger this makes sense, right? In calculus, we say this derivative is equal to this expression only as I take the delta t to 0. So if I have a big delta t, you could imagine that my error is just going to get bigger and bigger. And let's even make this larger. Let's say it's 0.25. OK, now you see quite clearly that you actually have a lot of error. Um, and there's some interesting features here. Okay, so the first thing we notice is that inc this is pretty accurate for small delta t. And as you increase delta t, your error between your approximate derivative and your true function derivative gets bigger and bigger. And you also notice that this forward difference scheme, the blue curve, over predicts when the slope is positive. It under predicts when the slope of the derivative is negative. And my backwards difference scheme does the exact opposite. It underpredicts when, when you have a positive slope, 
and it over predicts when you have a negative slope of the derivative. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out exactly how much error is there in this expression. How close is this numerical derivative to the actual derivative I'm trying to compute as a function of delta t? Okay, so I, I know that if I make delta t smaller, this gets better, but how much better and why? Okay, so that's going to be the next segment.